All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at some severe weather that's still left over here for the southeast. There's also a couple of days of severe weather upcoming, although they do not look major, which is really, really good news. We have obviously that major snowstorm happening along the eastern seaboard today, one of the biggest of the season. And then it's going to be kind of an interesting pattern that we need to talk about in just a little bit. Anyways, before I get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know, when do you think our next severe weather event, after this next four or five days is over, when do you think our next severe weather event will be? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now, as you're going to see in this video, we are expecting a quieter pattern after this storm moves out offshore of the eastern United States. We're going to walk through the next 10 days on the European model, uh, and that's really the, the range that I feel super confident in is within the next 10 days. You know, beyond 10 days is when you get a little bit iffy where it's, you know, it's worth looking at, but confidence is pretty medium at best. Um, especially when you're just looking at storm signals and things of that nature and overall patterns. On our Patreon page, we took the GFS extended range, things beyond 10 days out, and we found two potential storm signals. Now, these are storm signals that we will end up talking about here on the YouTube channel once it's within a reasonable range. But I went ahead and uploaded that to my Patreon page, the two storm signals that I think could end up being our next big storms in the United States. Um, so if you want to check those out, you can join the Patreon page, but I will be talking about those eventually on the channel over the coming days once it's within the range of the European model for sure. I'm just looking for content for the Patreon people um, on things that I usually would not talk about on the YouTube channel anyway. So it's not like I'm replacing something that I would talk about here on the YouTube channel. It's just something that I would have just kind of let play out and wait until it's within the next 10 days and show you guys on the European model. I hope that makes sense. You can check out our Patreon page in the comments the pinned comment down below, and then also the description, and join today. Anyway, our radar. We have a little bit going on up here in the northwest, but it's not a lot. We have some rain showers, some snow showers, and all sorts of showers going on, but uh, it's not a whole lot, and it's not super widespread at this point. Now, we do have, obviously, this massive storm here over the eastern United States, stretching from well into the Gulf of Mexico all the way up well into... Canada. So all the way up and down the East Coast from Florida to Maine and even beyond, we have this stretching storm that is clearly very, very major. We have thunderstorms happening down here, severe thunderstorms actually, matter of fact. And then we have significant snowfall taking place for a lot of these regions here. Uh, and this snowfall is going to stretch eastward even to where these regions are seeing snowfall. These areas, or when these areas that are seeing thunderstorms will see snowfall, which is super interesting as well. Now, let's just zoom into the west, and then we'll zoom into the east, all the different regions. Obviously, we're dealing with a little bit of some rain and snow showers here. Same story over here. Let's see. Yeah, so a few of the mountains have been dealing with this, and these were mostly around earlier, and they've kind of died down recently. So um, this will be pretty much a non-event up there. There is some lake effect left, left over, clearly, here for the upper peninsula of Michigan there. And then also the lower peninsula as well as into Indiana there. We're also dealing with quite a bit of lake effect snowfall taking place. Because there is truly frigid air just racing down this way. And we can tell the direction because of this lake effect. Um, that tells us the trajectory. It tells us the full story here, which is super interesting. Um, but that is why these areas are seeing such cold air enough to even see snowfall. And then these areas here are warmer because that cold air has not reached in yet. And that's what's developing this, this terribly strong cold front here uh, that's going to lead. Like right now, for instance, in Virginia, it's 60 degrees. And by about 2 or 3 p.m., we're expected to be at about 30 degrees and snowing. So uh, we're going to see about a 30 degree drop within within a 12 hour range, which is obviously very extreme. Um, it, it's gonna be interesting for a lot of folks here. Uh, let's work our way from the south and we'll work our way north. Uh, so we've been dealing with some of these terrible thunderstorms here in Florida, uh, even at a tornado warning at one point. Let's see, that was about 2, 2, 3 a.m. here for a bit of Florida and here we were dealing with that. Um, lots of lightning happening here. It is the lightning capital, so it makes sense, but just tons and tons of lightning here. 
for this entire corridor of Florida. Now behind that, further north in Georgia and Florida, let's see about here, we've been dealing with this line, this strong line of thunderstorms that's developed and it has severe thunderstorm warnings all along it at certain points. And that is where that sharp cutoff in temperatures is happening. And that is leading towards also some very damaging wind at times, I believe wholeheartedly that that is why those severe thunderstorms are in place or the severe thunderstorm warnings better yet. We see this further north as well, um, up into here. So for the Carolinas, we're starting to see this line move through. Also lots of lightning up here. Uh, this is the first time this year, I think, that I've seen lightning this far north up into Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina. Um, so this is definitely a sign of the spring time uh, for sure because we're, we're, we're rapidly moving closer um, and now we're even seeing spring-like weather. Although by 2 p.m., like I mentioned, we will not be seeing spring-like weather. We will be seeing January-like weather. So it is still very, very early in the spring uh, and that will be a brutal reminder uh, once that's taking place. Now we can see snowfall taking place all throughout this region here um, and it's just slowly but surely moving eastward as you can see. Uh, definitely worth noting there. Um, even up into Pennsylvania and New York, Vermont up here as well seeing heavy snowfall indicated by these blues. So these areas are seeing quite a substantial amount of snowfall. Uh, we're even seeing some lightning offshore of Massachusetts there, which is also super interesting at times. Uh, they're definitely going to be dealing with snow here pretty soon. So clearly this is a very major storm, and that snowfall is going to spread further east and further east. And um, everywhere I'm circling here is, is going to deal with pretty substantial snowfall at certain points. Uh, even down here into my neck of the woods, um, it could snow for a prolonged period of time, but accumulations are not expected um, especially south of this line. So um, you will see snowfall likely, which is very super interesting uh, to say the least this far into March, but um, I, I don't expect accumulation here in Southern Virginia or Northern North Carolina. Uh, I do expect pretty nasty thunderstorms to be possible though, um, which I hope I hear thunder. I think that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I haven't heard thunder in a very long time, so I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to move into the model of guidance and take a look at that upcoming pattern in just a moment. Now here is our storm obviously that is happening right now. So we can see this one is clearly just super <laughs> impactful from, from the Gulf all the way up to Canada. Like I said, this is stretching across so many states and impacting so many folks. And this trough behind it guys is also just very, very extreme. And you can see this sharp, northern turn there once this moves offshore cold air will engulf the eastern seaboard and this is why that snow is going to rapidly move in uh, for a lot of these regions here as you can see uh, this is by about 2 p.m and then that's by about 3 or 4 p.m here so you can see it's going to be rapidly moving towards the coast that cold air and that snow uh, and then we get in a much quieter pattern once this is moved off cold but quieter and here's the total snowfall we'll take a look at this real quickly um, so if you're anywhere in the grays, you're looking at dusting. If anything, blues will be two to six inches of snowfall. Purples will be six to 10. And then those pinks are going to be your 10 to 20 inch amounts. So this is clearly a major snowstorm, um, from about Alabama and Georgia all the way up through into New England. And, uh, even as far as the Northern tip of Maine there in New England, let's move back into our simulated radar here. And we can see cold air. This is, this is kind of what the air pattern looks like. It's just about like this. So we do see some warm air centering itself over kind of the Rockies here. And then we see a lot of cold air centering itself over the Northeast here with a tiny bit moving its way into the Northwest. This could be a sign of uh, this trough out East kind of coming to an end. Usually what happens here is once this trough, this one I'm circling here, moves in if it continues to move in and it beats out this ridge that I'm circling here then what will happen is this ridge will basically retreat eastward and that'll force this cold air here this one here to move further east uh, what will end up happening if that does take place is what we will watch is this warm air will head into the eastern United States and the cold will kind of circle back into the western United States so we'll see a complete flip uh, we will see a jet stream that looks something like more like this 
basically the opposite. So let's see if that is what takes place here. Yeah, sort of. Uh, the warm air, we see mostly a trough like this, and then the warm air try to move in here. We don't see a full-on tr trough move out. We do see a bit of a flat jet stream there. Uh, but definitely a trough moves into the Rockies. Uh, a ridge moves up into the west. That could be impacting things, but we do see a bit of warmer air for sure moving into the east, and the cold air has certainly receded to a certain level, uh, but definitely not extreme like we were seeing those changes earlier on in the season. I don't know what just happened there. Let's keep moving on with this. Now, just very quiet. As we can see, oh, we moved to the 60. That's, what, that's what's gone wrong here. Let's keep going. So eventually we do get kind of into that pattern I was talking about where we do see most of the trough here and a bit of a ridge in the east uh, where clearly warm air has worked its way in. This happens over time, though. This isn't just an immediate thing. We were seeing much more violent shifts earlier in February and even earlier in March here. Um, that's, that doesn't look to be the case here. This looks to be a subtle, slow-moving pattern. We do see some warmer moving up into California as well, up the West Coast. Um, but definitely the East is dealing with a ridge here by this point. But no major storms. Maybe this one. This could feature some severe weather here. Uh, we do have warm conditions. Uh, we have a lot of storminess showing up. So that could, around Friday the 18th uh, and even into the 19th up here into the Northeast, this could, could feature some severe weather we do see a bit of a storm signal here out west. That looks to be our next signal potentially around the around the 19th, 20th time frame. We see a storm move down here, um, look to do a curve about right here. This could be the next storm that sets up for this region, bringing severe weather underneath here and then snowfall up here to the north. That might be what we take a look at next. But clearly this storm is intensifying there for the middle of the United States. And we need to watch that very, very closely. Again, if you want to see the extended range, because we're right at day 10 right there, hours 240. If you want to see beyond hours 240, I'm going to tell you right now, it's low, lower confidence. But we do see some storm signals, which we can usually uh, look at and say, okay, this has a decent chance of happening. Uh, if you want to see that, you can join our Patreon page today. That's going to be in the description and in the pinned comment down below where we break down kind of that range, that long range stuff. So if you want to check that out, you can. If not, it'll be within the, the range of this model in a couple of days, and we will break that down well before it's happening regardless. But if you are curious, you can join that today. Um, it is a very fair price. Anyway, let's look at the Storm Prediction Center real quick. All right, so here's the day one categorical outlook. If you're anywhere in the light green, we're taking a look at a general thunderstorm risk there. That's where we don't expect severe weather, but thunder and lightning is possible there. Uh, severe weather is possible, it's just very unlikely. The darker green shade there is what we call our marginal risk. I'm going to underline it there. You might not be able to see that there. I'll underline it there. That's our marginal risk, and that's where we don't expect severe weather, but we think it could be possible in there. Uh, and if it does take place, it will be very isolated, severe weather reports of wind, hail, and tornadoes. Very, very isolated. The yellow is our slight risk, and that's where things get a little bit more likely, um, and we have a bit more scattered in severe weather. Uh, so you will see those wind, hail, and tornado reports often within there, but just very scattered about, and there will be also some areas that don't really see it within the yellow region as well. The orange area here is our enhanced risk. That's where things get a bit more elevated. That's where we start to expect severe weather reports within there. Um, fairly widespread, but there will still be some pockets that don't see any severe weather reports as well. But that is getting towards the elevated risks of severe weather. Let's take a look at those individual risks real quickly. Wind looks to be the biggest one today. We have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green. A 15% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the yellow. A 30% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the red. So that's very elevated, obviously. Hail is going to be a little bit less likely. We have a 5% chance there within the green, and that's about it. Tornadoes is going to be kind of a lower risk, but still, you don't, you never like to see that brown shade show up. Uh, we do have the green indicating 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location of a tornado occurring, but there's a 5% chance there within the brown, which is more than twice the chance. Uh, so you never like to see that, obviously. Now, as we move towards day three, day two has no severe weather expected. So Sunday, March 13th, at this point, has no severe weather expected. But by the time we're reaching Monday, we do have a general thunderstorm risk in southern Florida. And then a big thunderstorm area here in the south central United States for Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. 
We have a general thunderstorm risk there within the lighter green, a marginal risk here in the darker green. Again, we expect isolated severe weather to be possible. Uh, and then within the yellow region there, we expect severe weather to be scattered in potentially mostly for Texas, but also a little bit of Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Now, we don't have the individual risks for day three, but here is day four, where we also have a 15% chance of severe weather here within Florida, Alabama, and Georgia. And this usually turns out to be a slight risk there within the yellow region by the time we reach day three. So we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Let's break down our confidence tab and everything. We have a four out of six today, just like always. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next major snowstorm will be? And James Moore said, I believe our next major snowstorm won't be for another 10 or 20 days. And I certainly agree with this quieter pattern. It looks like at least 10 days until the next major snowstorm, but it could definitely be longer, which means basically that the winter is coming to a close. We're seeing a quieter pattern here for basically what would be considered the extended winter in March, typically. Uh, it looks like we're going to get a good chunk of that without any major snowstorms now moving forward after this one. So it's kind of looking like we're going to be closing out the winter time with, with not a lot more snow. Uh, we will be rapidly moving towards spring within the next 10 to 20 days, obviously, as things warm up rapidly here. Uh, you know, every single week we will be a little bit warmer. So things are coming to a close. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Planet patrons, Bill Crates, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Lily the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Holly, Michael Capite, Charles Stinnett, Bill Dallas, Gary's, and John Colisi also. I would also like to thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.